everyone and welcome to this week's video where we begin on the map screen looking at asteroids. And that is because we're going to be capturing an asteroid in this video, if you didn't already look at the title. We're tracking this particular bad boy here, you can see that green trajectory marker there. I selected this one in particular for reasons that will become apparent later on. The plan is to rendezvous with it as it whizzes past Kerbin and then bring it down into a circular equatorial low Kerbin orbit where we can do science stuff with it. Oddly enough, while tracking this, another asteroid managed to just capture itself into Kerbin orbit, which is why that's there. So if you want to capture your own asteroid but don't want to fly anything, just track a bunch of asteroids in the tracking center and then just time warp at maximum. It doesn't take long for one to get a mun assist or simply just glitch its way into a stable orbit. But that's not what we're doing today. No, we're doing this mission properly. Now, if we look at the asteroid's trajectory on the map screen, we can see it's going to be flying past at an almost completely polar inclination. And in order to save fuel and make this whole mission much easier, we're going to be launching ourselves into an orbit of the same inc inclination right off the bat, rather than doing an expensive orbital maneuver in order to change our inclination later on. I did this by looking at the map screen and estimating what kind of nav ball heading I'd need. You may find it useful to apply some good old trial and error for this bit and then just going ahead and doing it. You'll need to wait until the launch pad is directly below the trajectory of the asteroid, either with the pad on the same side or the opposite side of Kerbin, although that doesn't really matter if you're lucky enough to have an asteroid on an equatorial plane, but unfortunately that's quite a rare thing to have happen. You also need to make sure you're heading in the same direction as the asteroid. I'm just showing the ascent in its entirety, you can kind of see me trying to force my prograde marker on the nav ball to sort of line up with where I thought the uh, orbit I would need would be. And I think we did a pretty good job. This rocket here, you can see, is ludicrously powerful. Uh, the final stage is uses, uses nuclear engines and it has about 9,000 delta V. That will drop significantly once we attach ourselves to the asteroid because it's going to add a, a lot of weight to this thing. But when you're doing this, especially if you've not done this before, you really don't, don't worry about the efficiency. Um, you want to really try and I would recommend over engineering your initial ships or you could add an IRSU and add some drills to the front of your craft so you can actually mine the asteroid for resources. But we're not doing that because I wanted to keep this thing nice and pure so it would be uh, not contaminated by anything when it comes to actually doing some research on it. And there go the fairings and you can see this ship there. So we've got four uh, claws on it. You don't need four, but it looked cool, so I added four. But uh, ship design aside, here we go making the maneuver. So what we're going to do, I time warped to the point where the asteroid was just about to enter Kerbin's sphere influence. We don't have to spend much time in orbit. We're going to start out by getting ourselves into a rough, into a pretty low Kerbin orbit. I went for 123,000 meters because. You know, why not? <laughs> it doesn't really matter too much, but I'd, I'd recommend keeping it low. As you can see, we've got a pretty good job here getting our inclination to be the same as the asteroids, but if you didn't quite get it right, you could just change it now. And then what we're going to do, we're going to create a maneuver node to get our uh, apoapsis to intersect the asteroid. Then we're going to click the next orbit button, which changes the maneuver node to occur on the next subsequent orbit. We're going to press that a few times. It's going to be 11 days before we actually do this burn. And you can see we've got a separation of about 455 uh, kilometers between us and the asteroids. So that's pretty close for now. Just going to fast forward through the time warping to the maneuver node though because I don't want you to have an epileptic seizure. <laughs> okay, so we're doing our burn. It's pretty short because we've still got this big Rhino engine which is nice and uh, well it has a great thrust to weight ratio which is unfortunately not the same for the nuclear engines but you know, or whatever. And there goes our maneuver now. Yeah, the nuclear engines are way more efficient which is the upside of them. And then we're just going to use RCS to do a little bit of tweaking to get our maneuver node nice and close. And actually we've got a separation of 18.2 kilometers, which is really nice off the bat. Don't worry if you don't get it quite as close when you first do this. Um, you know, you can always do fine tuning later on. I'm just playing with the maneuver node here just to try and bring our encounter to be a little bit closer. So 0.3 kilometers is very close. So we're going to just use one of the nuclear engines set at low thrust so we can be nice and precise because we're only doing two meters per second. So we don't need a very powerful engine. And we're going to start burning. But unfortunately, the maneuver node messed up and then we started getting farther away. So, you know, <laughs> that's the one with the stock maneuver node. Sometimes it doesn't work too well. So in the end, I just started doing it manually. So burn a little bit prograde, then we can burn a little bit anti-normal, a little bit radial, just playing around. We're not using a great amount of fuel here, so I'm not worried about efficiency. And um, we're just gradually forcing that separation down. So 
just skipping a little bit ahead in this video just because it wasn't the most uh, engaging thing to watch just a separation of a maneuver node gradually coming down by the decimal point so we have skipped a little bit ahead here we've got a nice separation between the target and our vessel itself you can see the asteroid coming in hot but luckily since it's quite far out from Kerbin itself it's going to be going not it's not going to be going too fast we won't need to do a particularly big burn in order to match its speed so we're going to wait till we get nice and close and then we're going to start burning pro retrograde relative to the target. So you can see on the nav ball we've changed our um, the nav ball setting to be on about the target, not the orbit. And we need to change our speed by 465 meters per second, which is uh, not too bad, not too bad. Especially with the Rhino engine, we can do that fairly quickly. And you can see our orbit very, very quickly uh, matching itself up to be the same as the asteroids. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing a mission like this until you've done two things. Uh, done an interplanetary mission and have mastered orbital rendezvous. Asteroid capture missions are hard, like harder versions of both of those things because they have massive interplanetary orbits, like a planet, but they don't have gravity wells, so you have to intercept them like you would have to intercept a space station. So it can be pretty tough for people that have never done it before, so I would recommend playing other things in the game first before attempting this, but it's pretty satisfying and it's not actually it's not too difficult to be honest. So you just saw me there, once our speed was uh, zero relative to the target, I then pointed towards the target and burned, so now we're accelerating very quickly towards it, and now we're a mere two kilometers away from it. So we can burn retrograde again once more to kill our velocity relative to the target, and then burn towards it again. There's probably better ways of doing this, but this is just a really easy way of doing it. So we're burning towards it, and now we have uh, a separation of 100 meters, and there you can actually see it. So. We're going to just separate ourselves from the Rhino stage, point ourselves retrograde to the target, and there it is! And you can see, it is of course, I smashed into it there, so I started burning with the RCS to try and kill off speed as I realised I'd massively overestimated how uh, powerful the nuclear engines would be. We can deploy the claws as well. But yes, we can see that it's a magic asteroid, a green magic asteroid as well, which is um, a colour I, I kind of wanted. I thought about which colour I'd like and I decided I'd like green. Not sure why that's relevant, but yeah, we're just going to very slowly move towards it, 0.2 meters per second. I don't think you saw it there, but what I did was right-click the asteroid and press target center of mass. This way, when you push it, it's not going to be horribly out of balance. So that's what you want to do. So that's what I'm targeting at the moment on the nav ball. And there we go. We're all docked. So now... Unfortunately, it's not all over yet. We are still on an escape velocity from Kerbin, so now we need to change the nav ball to be relative to orbit again, which it should have done automatically, actually, come to think of it. And then we're going to wait until we get to our Kerbin periapsis before we burn retrograde to bring our orbit back down to a low Kerbin orbit. Now, you can see we've selected the Mun as a target. The reason for this, it just makes it easier to see if you're getting yourself into an equatorial orbit, I find. So there we go, we can see our orbit's the same as the Mun's there, so we're going to kind of do quite a few burns to get ourselves into the perfect orbit. If you have Mech Jeb, you could just use Mech Jeb, but I don't, so I don't. <laughs> okay, so 645 meters per second. Now our 9,000-ish meters per second of Delta V dropped to 5,800 when we attached to the asteroid. So it wasn't a big hit. We have more than enough fuel, but uh, if you've got a bigger asteroid than this, then that extra surplus of fuel may come in handy. And of course, you can download this in the description if you want. I don't like recommending downloading my craft slave because I think you learn a lot more and you get a lot more sense of satisfaction if you design the craft yourself, but you know, whatever, if you want to just download this, you can. Anyway, uh, we nearly finished our series of burns. We have another one now, 278 meters per second. I'm going to be aiming to put this in a low Kerbin orbit of around 350 meters, uh, 350,000 meters, I should say, above sea level, so nice and high, just because we don't know what kind of radiation or magic or other uh, abominations that this thing could contain, so we're going to keep it fairly high above the atmosphere. We're starting out going to have a periapsis of about four. Oh, I think I changed it to 450. Yeah, I did. So we changed it to 450, then we're going to bring it down just because it can be hard to be precise uh, in getting circular orbits right off the bat. So our periapsis will drop during this burn because we've got a 661 meters per second burn, so it's going to be hard to make that not influence the periapsis. So I'm going to keep our periapsis high for now and then we'll just do more fine tuning burns later on. So other than that I guess we'll just time warp down. Uh, we'll start burning a little bit before the maneuver just because the nuclear engines don't have great thrust to weight ratio so we may as well start burning before we get to the maneuver node because we're going to be passing, we're going to be passing over the maneuver node during this burn anyway. And there we go, so our periaps is now 350 meters, 350,000 meters again, I should say, above sea level. 
but the apoapsis is unfortunately still 500, so we'll point ourselves retrograde at periapsis and start burning once more. And we can just gradually start to force it down. So now our periapsis is too low, but our apoapsis is still too high, so we'll continue to burn at periapsis for a bit, point ourselves retrograde once more. There we go, so we're just doing very low thrust burns with the nuclear engines. So now we just need to raise our periapsis by about 2,000 meters, and then we should be pretty golden. So we'll time warp up there, make sure we're pointing prograde when we get to the apoapsis before commencing. Yeah, the nav ball started taking over the autopilot. And doing very small puffs. There we go. So that's because you're doing very, very small tweaks there. But look at that. Very small separation. And of course, when I detached the asteroid, it flung itself away. So actually, it wasn't quite as perfectly circular as what we have now. So, but uh, doesn't matter too much. It's still very, very, very circular. <laughs> anyway. It's time to get Jeb and Bill home. Some of you may have noticed that my spacecraft does not have any parachutes or method of getting Kerbal safely back to the surface. And this was not a mistake. This was not a design oversight. Because I never make design oversights and I never ever make mistakes. Ever. In fact, what I'm actually planning on doing to save this vessel it probably will, won't survive re-entry and when it hits the ground it's going to just explode and probably kill the crew. But then I had an idea. There is an asteroid. There is a rogue asteroid in Kerbin orbit. We could use that because I, I also felt like I still have loads of Delta V left over. I kind of wanted a, an excuse to justify why my vessel was so massively over-engineered. So we're going to get an encounter with this asteroid. So we have to change our inclination once again to match it. And then we're just going to basically grab a manoeuvre node and just sort of play around with it until we have a point that intersects the asteroid's orbit. And once we do, see the orange or the purple target marker here, we're going to just drag retrograde gradually and you can see we can force an encounter to appear. So first things first, we need to do the initial inclination change burn, which is going to be half a kilometre of second, half a kilometre of second, half a kilometre per, per, fi 500 metres per second, nearly. <laughs> doing our burn here so you can tell most of this video if it wasn't already obvious is played at four times speed in post-production because these burns are quite long especially with nuclear engines though we do have six of them and we are rapidly losing liquid fuel so we're getting lighter by the second and there we go we're just doing the same thing as before dragging the retrograde marker again separation of about 15 kilometers don't worry about getting it too close at this point because the stock uh, maneuver node maker is quite inaccurate it doesn't do well when it comes to dealing with very precise encounters. So we'll do this burn first, then we'll do another encounter later on, like we're saying. This is already 360.4 meters per second. We're just adding like fractions of a meter per second to it, where it's not going to be accurate. So we'll do, we'll get as close as we can first, uh, roughly, and then we'll do the accurate, the more precise stuff later on. But in fact, we can just do some puffs of RCS and look at that. There we go. So yeah, once we get to the end of the burn, we can just do some RCS to do the final tweaking, just so we can be extra accurate. And then there's nothing else to do other than just warping around. Make sure you don't overshoot like I always do for these things. And then put yourselves retrograde to the target. Only a 36 meter per second of difference in speed. The reason is you can see how close our orbit was to it anyway. We barely had to do any changes to get ourselves matched. And now we're killed of all our relative velocity. We just point ourselves towards the target. And you can see we're getting uh, a separation of just 100 meters once again. So we'll just time warp until that point point ourselves retrograde and there it is so unfortunately it wasn't another magic boulder if it was i probably would have put this alongside the other magic one and then we could have two together so we can come down very slowly i think i like to use the locked camera just so we can get the best cinematic perspective for the benefit of the viewer but <laughs> other than that now we just press five is the action group i use to toggle the uh, claws and we'll just target the center of mass and gradually move towards it and there we go. This probably looked a lot faster than it actually was because it's playing at a fast speed. But, you know, you, you, the claw is pretty hardy, to be honest. Don't worry about going at like half a meter per second and any more than that, I'll explode. We have a lot of surplus Delta V, so I'm not really worried about where I'm executing the deorbit burn. I'm just going to do it. And we're going to burn this out of retrograde and bring in our periapsis nice and low. I didn't want it to be too low just because I didn't want to risk... I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what, what, what I'm talking about anymore. Pointing ourselves prograde, uh, and we're going to actually activate more repellent because as I'm sure you might be able to see, this doesn't... I mean, you, you've seen my SS2s before. They're kind of generally sort of pointy, sleek, aerodynamic. This, this is none of those things. This is just a giant rock 
uh, with a thing. There you go, we've got an explosion there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, enable temperature gauges. Um, for the record, this is all done 100% re-entry heating, in case anyone was wondering. So we actually have the monopellant thrusters activated there with the SAS and RCS holding the prograde marker there. And we're actually running out of electric charge there. We didn't have, although we have 2,150 units of electricity, it takes a monumental amount of power just to keep this thing stable on re-entry. But um, we'll get that all back when we... There we go, the solar panels are exposed, we have all our electricity back now. When we actually start going into this next, this final aero capture, what we're going to do, we can actually start burning the nuclear engines because they actually have an alternator on board, and because they're not very powerful, even though we're burning prograde, it's not going to have a great impact on our ability to decelerate. So once we start running low on electricity, we can actually start burning prograde, and those nuclear engines will start recharging the batteries. But we don't need to do that just yet, okay. So we're still, we're still going pretty fast. There go the nuclear engines. We're still going pretty fast, so... If we lost our alignment now, we'd probably explode. Uh, things would not go well. So we'll just keep on faffing it around, trying to keep it nice and straight. we are not got that much monopropellant left as well, but then again, we are very low in the atmosphere and we're going sub 2,000 kilometers per second now. Kilometers per second? Why do I keep getting kilometers and meters mixed up in this commentary? Um, yeah, I'm just going to get away from that subject now. Very, going very slowly now. We're spinning quite wildly. It's not helped by the fact this is being played at fast motion in Sony Vegas, but, you know, it was that or you sit through a 15-minute video of me re-entering and nothing really dramatic happening. Don't worry, I'll slow it down for the final impact. Now, at this point, I realised I hadn't actually quick-saved prior to doing my aero break, so I was pretty nervous at this point. I was worried that this wouldn't work, but, well, you'll see for yourself if it did work or not. I'm playing at normal speed. I'm just going to shut up for this bit. Yes, the Kraken smiled upon us this day, for we survived, and no Kerbals died today. We, we did it, against all odds, and where's, where is the asteroid? Um, oh, there it is, and I found <laughs> one claw has remained attached, so pretty hilarious. Anyway, the, main, the original purpose of this video was me to capture that magic boulder down, and then construct a space station around it, and then we can do some stuff with it. But I thought it would be nice to make a video dedicated just to the act of capturing it. So next week we'll be building a space station to it. If I've already made that, then it'll be the top left video here, otherwise that will just be a random video. Top right is last week's video where we sent a strata launch vehicle to Minmus, and bottom right is one specially selected by YouTube's algorithm just for you. So enjoy, and thank you for watching.